In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, good morning. Hope you're all doing well. Dear friends, in a sense, Tamil Nadu has been gifted with good, able, caring leaders. Even in the recent past, we've had two very strong personalities. Maybe they had lots of uh, negativities in them, but still they were protecting the rights of the state. In fact, when they were there, uh, many people would speak whatever they want these days, would not have dared to um, say whatever they are saying these days. That's how strong they were and how protective they were of the rights of the state. Unfortunately for us, uh, both those leaders went almost at the same time. And there's a lacuna. One person was uh, showing signs of being a strong and courageous and caring leader, but he was uh, nipped in the bud almost by the same uh, strong leaders uh, without a futuristic vision for the state. And now that person is also gone from this world. Now, the reason I'm saying all this is because of today's saint, Saint Thomas Beckett, who also, as, as Archbishop of Canterbury, strongly protected the rights of the church. Um, it was in the 12th century in England and the king at that time was the second Henry, Henry II. Um, when he became king, he asked the Archbishop of uh, Canterbury at that time, Theobald, for someone to be his financial um, minister, finance minister, chancellor of the exchequer, he's called in England. Uh, someone able and uh, strong. And the Archbishop suggested the name of Thomas, who was a deacon at that time. And the King accepted. And Thomas became the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, as Chancellor of the Exchequer, his role is to make sure that the Exchequer is filled. The, the, uh, there is enough funds, finances, for all the government's activities welfare measures and so on for the people, for the governance. That's the role of the finance minister. And uh, the king also wanted just that. And uh, uh, Thomas was doing it very well. And the primary source of funds for the, the government that those days was the church, obviously. Church was, uh, the people were not that rich. And so, uh, the, re the way they be went about filling their coffers was by taking the properties of the church, annexing the properties uh, and so on. Um, Thomas and the king, Henry II, uh, did it with impunity. And uh, Thomas must have felt that this is for the welfare of the, of the people. But the king was living a very, very luxurious life, uh, the way he went about. And we, we know about it in recent times also. Uh, it said that the present day leaders do not wear the same uh, overcoat twice. The types of pens that they use, the type of uh, uh, jets that they fly and so on and so forth, the extravagance. Um, maybe definitely not to this level, but the king was also living a very extravagant life. Thomas also had to live that life because he was sharing the same place. Uh, this must have made him feel a bit of guilt that he is annexing the properties, not for the person to live a luxurious life, but for the welfare of the government and all the work that the government is doing. And in this situation, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Theobald, died and uh, the king wanted Thomas to become the Archbishop of Canterbury. For obvious reasons, he felt that if Thomas was the Archbishop, then it will be even more easier for him to take away the properties of the church. But Thomas was reluctant precisely for the same reason. He said that if I am an archbishop, I will not be able to comply with the, the requests of the king. Uh, I will have to guard the church. Not uh, I have to roll, uh, don that role, not this role. And yet the king prevailed. He recommended to the pope and the pope appointed Thomas as the archbishop of Canterbury. But once he became the archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas became very uh, austere in his lifestyle and he was not cooperating with the king slowly enmity uh, started and it became very serious thomas was brutally murdered eventually inside his own cathedral inside his own cathedral and as a result um, he definitely uh, caused a change in the king the king after a few uh, months or so went to the tomb of thomas and paid homage to him and realized his mistake um, when we celebrate Thomas Pickett, we 
definitely realize the importance of being very responsible with our uh, our duties being totally dedicated to what our role is and doing that role to the full uh, the church also needs uh, its rights and its uh, properties and so on in order to be the light of the world because as both today's readings uh, convey Jesus is the light of the world and Simeon is delighted that he is at last at last able to see the light of the world uh, and we have a role to take that light to the world but then that has to be done and for that we need all the properties and all our rights and so on but that has to be done in a very responsible manner it's definitely much better to give some lights to houses which are not so bright than to decorate our churches with great great very expensive lights and so on um the prudence and so on the way we go about our lifestyle and so definitely thomas um uh definitely asks us to look into ourselves and see how we manage our funds and our, our properties and so on uh, how guarding we are and how prudent we are in using them also for the welfare of the church's mission to spread jesus as the light of the world and thereby in uh, invigorate the people to live their lives well uh, let us pray for all these graces today heavenly father help us to be very prudent and cautious in protecting and using the properties and the facilities of the church we make this prayer through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever amen Thank you.